Hello guys, welcome back. This is video number 28 in the 30 days of Databricks series. And this video is going to be about SQL warehouses in the notebook. And as it is mentioned here in the documentation also, this is in a public preview. So what it is, when a notebook is attached to a SQL warehouse, you can run SQL and the markdown cells. What I have shown you before, if we go to our Databricks UI, is first I showed you how you can uh, create a cluster and use that in the notebook. So if we create the cluster there, what we can do is we can run uh, different things. We can run SQL, Scala, R, Python. But and then I also showed you about SQL warehouses where we can use the warehouse in order to do some SQL things. But this new concept is you can create a SQL warehouse and use that in notebook. Meaning that let's say that you use a lot of SQL things and you want to have the power of SQL warehouse but use that in notebook so that it is easily displaying here because everybody has their own preferences. I think that's the reason why Databricks has introduced this and why it is important is also because as it says that all other shells, Python, R and other languages are ignored. So you, you can have the code in the notebook but that is ignored and SQL sales executed on SQL warehouses appear in the SQL warehouses query history. That is the good part because when we use the normal cluster, the queries are not executed or does not appear in the SQL warehouses query history. But if we use the SQL warehouse, then those things appear there. You can go through the this documentation and only the pro or serverless SQL warehouses is required. And I will show you how you can attach this. But some of the limitations are there as of now. When attached to SQL warehouse execution context have an ideal time out of eight hours, then the maximum size for return result is 10,000 rows or 2 MB, which, whichever is smaller. And you cannot run the workflows or schedule job on a SQL warehouse. Because you might be thinking, okay, what is the difference if I can use SQL warehouse in notebook and then the normal compute in the notebook. So this is the distinction that you cannot run the way workflows or schedule job. One thing what uh, you what uh, not to be confused here is if you want to use other functionality of the notebook, then go with the compute and create a, a cluster there. But if you want to just work with the SQL stuffs and have the power or the capabilities of SQL warehouses into the notebook, then uh, go for that. So here I am on the notebook and one thing that I need to make it here SQL language notebook and now I need to attach the cluster. So how to attach the cluster? You can go to this connect icon and you can see here I have two clusters just to demonstrate for you that this is the SQL warehouse in notebook meaning that I have created a SQL uh, warehouse and another one is the normal cluster just to show you also here. So this is the normal cluster, compute cluster, and there is SQL warehouses and another warehouse. This is the SQL warehouse. I used to show you how you can use this in SQL things, right? Now I'm going to use this in the notebook itself. So I will go here. From here, as it shows here, which one you want to choose, or you can go to create new resource and create from here, but we don't need to go here. I will go here, and this is the normal cluster. I will go with the SQL warehouse. And as it says here, preview also, just to let us know. I can just say select here. It says here, SQL warehouses only support SQL and markdown sales. As I said you before, sales of other languages types will be skipped during the execution. So you can have the code, but it will be skipped. I will say confirm. Now it is attached. So this is just a uh, random example I'm showing you what is in the catalog, the same notebook I used to show you before also. So this is the markdown shell. I can run shift enter. Okay, there is no problem because it says that we can run SQL as well as the markdown shells, right? Now what happens if I run this create catalog if not exist, quick start catalog. So you can run also from here by the way, or just shift enter is easier for me, but you can go here and run shell. Okay. It says create catalog if not exist, quick start catalog. I already have that catalog, but I just want to run it here. It says OK. And then this is now using the SQL warehouse, meaning that 
this query needs to be appeared in the query history. Let's go here and check if it appears there or not. So if I go here, the first one maybe, okay, you can see here, it took 8.7 seconds and it is using the SQL warehouse notebook and SQL warehouse in notebook with SQL warehouse mean the cluster and the create catalog if not exist is appearing here. If I click this one, okay, here you can see this is the command that I just wrote and it shows the status creator, all the different things and which notebook it was created. This is the good part from here and it has all the other things also mentioned here. You can just go through this and find more information. Now I can run other cells also. Okay, use catalog this. So I will run this. It is going to use that particular catalog. I can say show catalog. Okay, let's show some catalogs or all the catalogs that I have. I have DS basics and main. What if I want to know the schema also? I can go here and say show schemas. So it will show us the default and information schema. Why it is just showing me default and information schema? Because I said here, use catalog quick start catalog. If I said here other things, then it would show me the catalogs of that particular, it will show me the schema of that particular catalog, right? Let's say that if I change this to something else, let me go just to demonstrate you. I will go to the catalog. And here, let me go. I have some of the catalogs here, right? What if if I go to system? Okay, it just has the information schema. What I can do is go to my notebook. Let me say that I just want to use, what was it? Let me go back again. It was system, right? I will say here's use catalog system. If I say this, it says okay. But then now if I go here and say show schema, it will show me, okay, information schema. Now I hope you get the idea, but I want to show you some data also there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the main. Here I will just go and say use catalog main. So it is going to use that catalog. And I want to show the schemas. Okay, it is going to show me the schema default and this normal things. And now let's say that I want to select all the rows from that particular table because I already have the movie statistics data set inside that schema. If I go to main, if I go to default and there is movie statistics data set, I want to query that. So I said select all from main dot default dot name of the table and limit 10. So if I run this, it will show me the top 10 rows of that particular table. And if you have, if you haven't watched my Unity catalog video, I refer or I want or I ask you to watch that so that you know what is Unity catalog and why I am using these three layers. So there is catalog, schema or the database and there is a table. And yeah, you can see that there is a table now. Just to demonstrate that, let's say that we want to run some Python cells here. What I need to provide is Python first. I will say, okay. This is a Python. What happens if I provide Python? You can see it already shows here some error. Cannot execute non SQL cells when connected to a SQL warehouse. It already shows the error there, but let's say I want to print something. I just want to print hi. So if I run this, of course, cell is skipped during execution. SQL warehouses only support executing the SQL cells. Now I run all the different things. If I go to the query history, and here, if I refresh the page, here is the refresh icon. As you can see here, all the different things which I executed in the notebook is shown in the query history. That is the good part of using the SQL warehouses in the notebook. And I think this is the reason why Fabrix has introduced this, how we can use the SQL warehouse in the notebook because many people prefer using the notebook and they want to use the SQL queries in the notebook but taking the cluster or maybe let's say SQL warehouses capabilities. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you learned something new. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.